Yeah. Okay, the event is starting, and we're live. Hi, I'm Daniel Kinster from Wikimedia Germany. I'm the chair of the, um, I was going to say the architecture committee. No, the technical committee now, um, TechCom for short. Uh, welcome to our webcast on uh, the new TechCom chart. Um, right. I have a little presentation prepared. I will share it with you now, and um, then we'll, we will um, walk through it briefly. It's not a very long presentation. And then we will hopefully have time for questions via IRC. Um, if you are not on IRC and want to be, it is the channel uh, wikimedia-office on uh, freenode.net. OK, uh, so let me see if I can get the screen share going. All right, so the Tech Home Charter. A few months ago, or for a long time actually, the Architecture Committee and later the Technical Committee um, has been wanting to give itself a charter where we write, write down what this committee is all about and um, how it functions and what its um, duties are. Uh, and about a month ago, Shortly before Wikimania, uh, we actually got around to writing and passing such a charter. So I will want to tell you a little bit about it today. The technical committee today is um, Brian, myself, Gabriel, Giuseppe, only recently, he uh, just joined us last week, Rowan, Tim, Timo, and Victoria. And uh, Kevin is often helping us out with uh, note-taking and other organizational duties. What's the idea of behind the technical committee? The idea was originally, and still is really, to have a place to resolve tricky technical questions. Um, too often things just get stuck because there's nobody around to actually make the tough decisions. So uh, a few years ago, there. likely we lost Daniel. Okay, we did. So we'll stand by for him to come back. I see an opportunity for post-production post here now. Yeah, I can I can edit this out. So, uh, so, so maybe, um, can you hear me? Well, while we wait, maybe I can give a bit more color. Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay, good. So until then, uh, Daniel comes back. So uh, Daniel made this presentation uh, at Wikimania in Montreal last month, uh, but obviously not everybody is able to attend uh, Wikimania. So we thought it would be helpful to share it here again uh, more broadly and also record it so that folks can have uh, access to it afterward. Um, partly uh, the reason why we decided to do this was a specific uh, set of questions that came from the community about uh, the, um, the new tech home. Uh, people had questions, so we felt it, it would be helpful uh, to um, get everybody together here to, uh, you know, to give our views for how this piece uh, has changed uh, recently. And obviously the architecture committee has been uh, part of the, uh, you know, it, 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 it presented leadership uh, to the technical community of the movement for a long time. And the opportunity here for us was to make it even more effective. And this is what we, uh, this is what we tried to do. Uh, so all the changes that Daniel will be speaking of are um, 
uh, consequences of that desire to make things, um, to, to make the committee more um, effective in its support of the foundation. Um, let's see. So, yeah, I don't know if uh, Daniel realizes that he's been cut off. Um, maybe, a, maybe Kim, you can send him a quick note. I pinged him on IRC. Is he on IRC? The thing is, if you're presenting full screen and you are talking, uh, you can go on for 20 minutes <laughs> without realizing. Right. Um, so let's see, maybe. I can go ahead and share my screen or something. Shall I just share my screen? I have the presentation in front of me here. Well, I think we need a plan B. So if you have a presentation and you want to continue, uh, Victoria, I think that would be great. Yeah, so um, presumably you cannot see it just yet, right? Sorry? Uh, I, I see your sc screen share, Victoria. But not the presentation? No. Okay, so I need to... The screen share differently, just give me one second and I will do that. Okay, so here we go. Oopsie. And here's the presentation, and I should put it in presentation mode. All right, so starting from the top, and of course, you know, um, let's, let's not note the uh, so there is an embedded technical joke here that I'm sure most of you have already seen. Um, so this is uh, of course already this, this has already been covered by Daniel. So the the committee is a place where we aggregate um, some of the most senior people in the technology um, part of the community, uh, and they are there to help. Uh, the rest of the technology community to resolve tricky questions. Um, and as you see, of course, from the constitution of the community, there are folks there like Brian and Tim that have been here like since the first line of code, more or less, has been written. So we have a great deal of, uh, of legacy and um, and of knowledge into what, uh, you know, what powers of the, the, the movement day in, day out. Um, the way that the committee has worked uh, so far is primarily through the RFC model, where, um, you know, somebody is trying to do something, they're not sure um, how to do it, they'd like uh, advice, support from uh, the architecture committee, as it used to be, and they would support, they would submit an RFC, uh, and the ArchCon would eventually get around to it and uh, respond uh, with advice. One of the things that was not working very well was it wasn't clear whether the, RF, the, whether the RFC would in fact be um, executed, if you like, by uh, the ArchCon, or whether it, they were just there to, to, to provide advice. And um, Clearly, you know, this was, uh, this was a significant uh, question. Um, in, in the technology committee, uh, as constituted now, you know, we are very clear that we don't have resources in this committee 
to be executing on RFCs, but what we do have are some, as I said, the most senior technologists in the community that can advise others that um, undertaking projects that are big and significant for the movement. Um, so in, in order to capture um, the intent for how the, uh, the community should now be um, functioning, we spent, I think, and Kevin, you know, he can correct me on this, we spent of the order of a quarter, I think, uh, debating to try and come up with a charter that is much more accurate in, in both in its intent and, uh, and, and kind of communication about that intent to the community. So um, this charter was approved, um, I think about two months ago roughly, and has been subsequently uh, shared. So if we start walking through it, uh, first of all, the mission of the, uh, the committee is, is the goal to place for high impact technical decisions. And what does that mean? Well, these are decisions that are, are strategic, that are cross-cutting, or they are hard to undo. So this is how the committee um, defined what high impact meant. Um, and in addition to that, there's a bunch of stuff that perhaps don't fall into, um, into this kind of three categories right off the bat, but there are also um, other aspects that the committee is responsible for uh, as, as the guardian, and that is the integrity of the code base, the consistency of approach, the stability of the code base, as well as its performance. Um, so this is really the universe within which the, um, the tech home is, uh, is operating. And I guess we've been operating like this now for, I would say, the, the last month or so. Um, so the purpose uh, is really to provide technical leadership. Um, you know, these are the people that we touch the most with the technical foundation of our, of our work. Um, and we want to make sure that uh, they are able to provide advice not only to the projects that they are working on, but more broadly, uh, into the, um, um, the evolution of our code base. And in many ways, the TECOM uh, acts as an extension of the um, CTO of the foundation. Um, and I, I mean that kind of very literally. Um, when I joined the foundation, there was, and uh, there still is, a great deal of pent up kind of decisions, choices that had to be made, big choices about our staff. Um, and I very deliberately did virtually nothing around those decisions because I don't believe that in our movement, in our foundation, we will be consistent with our principles to have one person make these determinations. Uh, but um, it is much more appropriate and actually likely to lead to a much better outcome to have that responsibility shared with other very senior technology um, kind of experts in the foundation, and that's really the tech home uh, in, you know, in, 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 in a nutshell. Right? I mean, it captures the, the most senior and technical expertise that we have and applies it in support of the mission. And also, we wanted to, uh, to make sure to, to affirm that the tech home is not something that is exclusive to the foundation, kind of far from it. In fact, Daniel Kinsler, as you know, is not an employee of the foundation. Uh, he's an employee of, hi Daniel, welcome back. He's an employee of uh, Wikimedia Deutschland, uh, but we would like to make it so that the, uh, the tech home addresses and is open more broadly uh, within the volunteer community. So Daniel, now that you're back, um, we are to take over from here, and I'm happy to present, continue presenting so that you don't have to worry about that. Um, okay, I have no idea uh, where I left off because apparently Google decided to just kick me out and I didn't notice until I was actually finished presenting. So, okay, so I'm on the purple slide. Can you see my slides? I see that you're on the purple slide, yes. Um, should I just pick up from there? Uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. 
All right. Sorry about that. Um, let me get the screen share going again. Shall, oh, shall I share my screen or shall we keep using yours? Uh, let's, let's just use mine to avoid any more needling of Google. <laughs> All right. Um, then okay, you may have before, to... Sorry, then before you... we continue, and because I assume we'll cut this piece, there's a question on IRC. So who's taking the questions from IRC? So I can't see the question so uh, because I'm sharing the screen. So maybe, Daniel, why don't you take the question? The question is, lack of resources to execute RFCs, how about Fabricator? Uh, I, um, for the first one, I kind of have an answer. The second one, I have no idea what to say to that. That would need a little bit more elaboration. But I would prefer to finish the presentation first. It's like five minutes and uh, take questions after that or answer questions after that. We can collect questions all the time, of course. Yeah, let's do that. Makes sense. Okay, um, so Victoria, will you change slides while I talk? Yeah, so I just moved to the next one. All right. Yeah, um, scope of the committee. Um, the idea is that the technical committee is really about all the software that serves Wikimedia users. Of course, this includes first and foremost uh, MediaWiki. Um, plus all the extensions that are deployed. Um, but it also includes things like the mobile, mobile apps. Our focus is particularly on um, software and system architecture, but also on performance, security, um, database schemas, and so on. Of course, well, in the end, it's all about quality, ensuring software quality. And that also includes um, automated tests, it also includes uh, documentation or conventions for documentation, coding conventions, and so on. Can you just slide, please? I can't. Um, right. Not in scope would be documentation for um, wiki users or wiki owners, so things not aimed at developers. Uh, the tools used by developers. Even well, we may have um, recommendations there or opinions, but in the end, it's up to anyone uh, what they want to use to develop the software. Uh, similar similar um, team processes or other social aspects of, of collaboration are not uh, something that we um, have any authority on. Uh, also, anything running on the Wikimedia Cloud service, formerly known as Labs is out of scope. Um, of course, if you write something there and you uh, want input from the technical committee or an opinion, uh, we, are, we are happy um, to, <clears throat> to give an answer. But the idea behind having uh, the cloud service is really to give people a safe place to work on software uh, without being slowed down by the bureaucracy that we kind of need to you know, keep the, the live cluster running. So uh, there's no requirement for anything running on labs to go through uh, the technical committee. Right. Next, please. One important aspect is that uh, we try to establish uh, the technical committee as part of the, the software development process in general um, and make it so that a review of the software and system architecture uh, becomes a normal part of uh, the design of any new feature or subsystem, just like security review or performance review are. Uh, the established RFC process is the default process for this. But it is not the, the only way to interact with the committee. It's currently the only formalized way, right? But you know, just write an email, um, and then we can talk. Um, right. Also, policies and guidelines that affect how code is written or how code quality is ensured um, are in scope of the committee, and uh, the committee should be involved in the development of such policies. 
I keep trying to change the slides and it keeps not working. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the committee's authority is derived from the authority of the CTO. And um, as such, the, any, any final decisions by the committee are uh, authoritative, and any conflicts um, should be escalated uh, through the CTO and should be resolved through the CTO. That doesn't mean that everything that uh, the technical committee says is, is set in stone, uh, right? We may offer opinions and recommendations, but in the end, if there is a, a definite decision, then um, it does have the authority of the CTO, which is uh, actually probably the most important, um, the most important thing that we now have with the charter, because previously, uh, the committee did not have any formal authority whatsoever. Anything we could do was hope that people would listen. Uh, and we kind of still hope people do listen. Uh, it's also important to note that the uh, uh, technical committee decides on, uh, based on its own expertise, um, informed, by, informed by input from, from experts and from the community. Yeah. Okay, now we can go on. Right, thanks. Um, the technical committee is self-selected, so we decide ourselves uh, who should be a member and who shouldn't be a member, and we are uh, pretty free in that, except for the fact that the CTO is always a member of the technical committee. Um, it would simply be silly to do it otherwise, because the uh, otherwise, you would have two bodies that essentially exercise the same authority, um, but no close interaction between the two. That would, that would just be uh, annoying. Our goal in selecting new members is, of course, to find people with lots of expertise and lots of experience in the area of MediaWiki um, and, and related software. And we try to cover as many different angles of this as possible. So it's not only um, people like me who have been working on MediaWiki Core for a long time, but also people who know about the operations uh, side of things, people who know about um, mobile devices, and so on. So we, we are currently still very much focused on MediaWiki Core, um, but we try to expand uh, the, the kinds of expertise we, we cover. Right, um, I think on the last slide we have a few questions that may serve as an inspiration to what we could talk about over the next half hour or so. Uh, these were questions that, that came up um, while we were discussing the charter draft on MediaWiki.org. Uh, but we can also talk about other things if you like. Right, um, so that's my presentation. I hope it was informative and the break wasn't horribly long. I'm still very sorry about this. Um, yeah, and now for the questions. So maybe we can do that soon. Do we have? Yeah, I see some things on IRC, but it's probably better if someone else collects them and, and asks them. Okay. Maybe I can... There was one question earlier that I said I could answer, and now I forgot what it was. I think oh, it was about the lack of resources to execute RFCs. Uh, okay, I can I can talk about that a little bit. Um, basically, we so in the past it was often the case that someone came up with uh, a an, an idea for a feature or how things should be changed internally, and ran that through the architecture committee, and then nothing because, well, we can say yeah that looks good, and then nothing happens. Um, and that is actually a pretty important point uh, in terms of expectation management. This is still so. The 
architecture committee, no, the technical committee, sorry, I'm still stuck in the old ways. The technical committee does not have any authority over resourcing and doesn't have any resources on its own. And uh, the, the, the committee members also don't have uh, a lot of time reserved for um, doing committee work. Well, we estimate roughly four hours a week. Um, so certainly no time to actually do software development. So we have now been saying that if you bring an RFC, it should already be resourced. If it is not resourced, we will probably not discuss it because that's just a waste of everyone's time. Um, we have been, not been very strict about this um, in, in recent times, but I will try to be a lot stricter about, uh, about, about that aspect. That answers the question. So, so I think just to, um, to amplify that point, um, then it's right, the, the, the committee does not have its own resources, neither it can do uh, allocation of resources on behalf of other teams. That is something that happens locally. But where a team has a plan uh, to build something that would fall in the strategic, in the cross-cutting, in the carto onto category, uh, and affect also stability and security, the things that we talked about, then that needs to be discussed at the uh, technical committee. So that, that's, that's the place where we make sure that you know, we don't make decisions um, you know, by locally optimizing what is good for this particular project that we're working on, that might uh, at the same time create you know, tech debt, baggage, break other things in other parts of the company. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the tech home is really the guardian, as Daniel was saying, of the integrity and really to some extent, to a great extent, the future of the, um, of the software platform that we rely on. Okay, are there any other questions? Kim, if you're talking, you're muted. Uh, I'm not talking. There's no questions so far. Okay. So, is there no, no, no questions? One, one other thing just to, um, to, uh, to get out there to remind people. Um, we have, of course, a Dev Summit coming up in January, the 22nd to 23rd of January, and I send out a uh, heads up about the whole day kind of thing. Uh, the uh, technical committee will have a great deal of influence on how we select topics and how in general we run uh, the tech summits, both this uh, this coming January and in the years you know, uh, following that, uh, to make sure that we use that event and the investment that we're making in terms of resources and people time and so on, uh, the best way possible, the more productive way possible for the future of the movement. So in, in this particular case, um, uh, a good subset of the uh, technical committee would be participating in the program committee for the summit. Um, so in, in other words, um, what I'm saying is you, you can expect to see the role of um, the techcom uh, to grow over uh, over time significantly to cover really the some of the core um, kind of methods and tools and projects that we pick to work on as a community again in support of our overall mission. So you know leadership and technology leadership and foundation and the movement is much more pluralistic than it would be in any other in any company, and um, the telecom is how that gets personified. I see no more questions. I think. I think that's uh, that's great. Uh, I um, I want to thank you, Daniel, for preparing this great presentation and the team um, 
for um, creating and publicizing the event. Um, also the team that recorded it here for posterity, let's make it available uh, to, uh, to people that were not able to be here today. Uh, and yes, we will wait for more questions if, as they come in. Apparently there are some on the YouTube channel. Yes, yeah. So, yeah. Somebody uh, ask those questions on behalf of the people on the, on the YouTube stream. Okay, so there's one question. What does it take in minimum to be a member of the TechCom? And can a volunteer like me be part of this committee? Hence, how should we apply? Um, so volunteers can be part of the architecture committee. Um, in general, we go looking for people um, and we don't, well, so far nobody has had the idea to actively apply. Uh, the question is, all, so if someone applies, uh, the question is then, are we actually currently looking for a new member who, uh, and is, um, does the expertise that the person offer, offers actually fits? Um, in general, we are looking for people with a lot of, a lot of experience uh, with the development of MediaWiki and related software. And the likelihood, so it's, it's quite likely that it will be someone that we already know. Uh, it's possible that someone uh, would just show up and tell us how great they are, and we say, yeah, excellent. We need exactly that kind of expertise right now, so join us. But honestly, I think it's a bit unlikely. Um, yeah. So in general, what's the minimum um, requirement? Well, we should, you should convince us that we can trust you to um, understand the consequences of any proposed change uh, that any proposed change would have in your area of expertise and can assess it. Uh, with respect to its um, well, its merits and its strategic impact. Can I take a stab at this question as well? Uh, because it's a, it's a, actually it's a great question. Um, uh, I mean, I, I would say that the number one criteria is kind of technical seniority and respect thereof in the technical community uh, of our movement. So that's like the number one criteria. Um, so the committee, um, as Daniel was saying earlier, is, is consists of seven members now. Ideally, we'd like to have about 10. So we are um, actively kind of considering and looking at new members. Um, one of the things that we look at as well as seniority is balancing the, the areas of expertise so that we can cover um, kind of the, the entire um, kind of domain, if you like. Um, and also, I would say that the committee is self-selecting, as Daniel was saying earlier. What this means is, in order to become a member, the existing committee members have to really vote you in. And, you know, I'm kind of new to this, um, having been there less than a year, but the way that I interpret uh, the workings of the committee on, on this um, on this topic is that there's always a uh, very deep and social conversation and uh, in every case that I'm aware of, consensus uh, for new members. So it's, uh, it's, I guess it's, it's possible that, uh, you know, a member or two may disagree about extending an offer to become a member to somebody, but I've not seen it happen yet. So um, this committee, uh, seems to have a way of working that is very collaborative and very um, kind of consensus driven. And I expect that to continue to be the case. Having said all that, if somebody um, feels like they have the time and the um, and kind of plenty of the skills that are needed to participate, you should absolutely let you know one or more committee members know. Just be, be aware that the bar is kind of high, and we, you know, we want to 
know, we will keep it high. Don't, in other words, don't get um, so when I'm disappointed if the answer is no, maybe the answer is not now, maybe in the future. Um, again, you know, this is driven from the basis of both seniority, respect in the organization, the community, as well as um, coverage of skills that we, that we need to have. Um, yeah, uh, Cornell just mentioned something on IRC uh, that I think is actually a pretty good point. He um, says, um, you would think that people wanting to join TechCom should be active, should be people who are already active in reviewing RFCs, so who take part in the public meetings or, and are active on, fe on the respective fabricator tickets. And um, I think that is, that is probably true. Uh, <clears throat> that is a good way to show uh, that you're qualified. Um, and it's also a good, a good way to actually practice and uh, get in more practice. Um, this is not like a sports event, right? Um, but basically getting an understanding of how this process works and what the criteria are and, and all these things. Any other questions, Kim, on the, uh, on the YouTube stream? There is one participant, but I am not understanding the questions. I'm not sure if it's for the ARCOM. Uh, sorry, I'm also in the old school in the TechCom. And uh, I apparently have hit my limit on comments in YouTube. <laughs> so if, if you can access the URL, you can see yourself, maybe you will understand. Just one, uh, one more comment uh, on um, my side is, you know, I would welcome uh, diversity in the telecom. Um, you know, as, as usual with matters technical, um, we're not very diverse. I would uh, love to redress the balance both in terms of, you know, uh, gender and, you know, uh, kind of having more other representative groups there, but also in terms of having volunteers be part of it as well as staffers. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I would like us to do, and I think, um, for example, the hackathons offer a great opportunity to, to, to do that, is to become acquainted and bring up, you know, young and aspiring members of the technical community uh, to a level that they can join. I would love to see that. Yeah, uh, one of the things about the, the um, about volunteer contributors is always um, there's <laughs> there's a kind of um, intrinsic bias there. If you are a highly skilled, experienced volunteer, you probably got an offer or two from Wikimedia at some point. So. Essentially, if you are a highly skilled, experienced developer, chances are that you are all, that you will become an employee at some point. Which kind of means that there are not that many highly skilled um, and experienced volunteer developers. There are some who have resisted all um, tempting offers so far, I guess, um, but it's really not many. Any more questions? I don't see any the IRC, and uh, it sounds like we've covered uh, most of the questions that we've had. Kim, are you, are you ready to, uh, to wrap this up? Yes, I think so. Okay. So thank you everybody. Thank you particularly to Daniel for both presenting and preparing the presentation, persevering through the, uh, the, the Google challenges that, uh, that we've had. Um, 
I really appreciate everybody's uh, support so far in you know, changing the, the, the charter, you know, putting new members, you know, and I, I, I'm looking forward to making the, the, top, the tech form more and more kind of a key forum for significant decisions for our movement when it comes to technology. I believe there are, you know, we're like most of the, most of the way there, we just need to bring it over the, uh, over the edge. Um, and I am kind of really thrilled to have the opportunity to work with them. I feel humble, you know, working with people like Daniel and Brian and Tim. Every, every time I show up on these meetings, I, uh, I'm surprised at the depth of knowledge and expertise uh, in that team, and I always learn something. So. Thank you, everyone. Have, have a great day, and please follow up with any more questions, either to myself or Daniel or any other member of the, of the committee that I admire. Thank you all.